Today we're building the next few rooms in our dungeon. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here and I'm back with another video about building a dungeon. If you want regular inspiration then subscribe to the channel and now we can get back into building that dungeon. I've changed the layout of the dungeon as we've gone along and due to that I needed to do some replanning. So I first decided to plan out the next handful of rooms so that they will fit in with our dungeon. I didn't get all the footage of this because it was rather boring. It was just resizing the next few rooms and lining up the doors so everything fits nicely. I then use a gray sharpie and a framer square to measure out the sizes of the rooms that I need. I'm doing this on half inch XPS foam in order to match with the rest of our dungeon rooms. Then using a 1.4 millimeter ballpoint pen, I do a brickwork pattern that lines up nicely with the grid. This wide tipped pen is ideal for working with foam as it will leave impressions rather than digging in and ripping the foam. I have an Amazon link in the description if you're interested in getting the exact pens that I use and also other supplies that I use in this build. Also don't forget to check the secret Amazon link of this video and the last few videos that I've put out. I did this step before cutting the rooms but that isn't necessary. My logic is that if I get all of it done in one step, it will save time later. Now I use an ultra fine point sharpie to add some interest to the floors by adding some large cracks into the brickwork. Note that the lines I'm adding are fairly random and also not very realistic. Regardless, these lines add a lot of interest. You can take the time to make individual bricks cracked and chipped, but it honestly isn't too worth it for the build we're doing today. Next, I cut the rooms out just outside their measured circumference. I try to make straight cuts with my knife as it will help keep things straighter later on when we pull out the hot wire table. I then pull out my piece of asphalt and use it to texture the surface of the foam. This is my absolute favorite tool for adding texture. It really adds an awesome stony surface and fast. And then on inch thick XPS foam, I measure out the walls to match the gridded pattern that I mapped out in the beginning of this video. I then pull out the Proxon hot wire table. And since we want the walls to be the same height as the previous room in our dungeon, I'm just going to hold a similar size of half inch piece of foam under the one inch foam while cutting out the basic shape. We are just cutting everything down to size so they will be easier to work with when I'm hot gluing the walls together. I pull out the hot glue gun and glue our roughly cut walls together. I'm not using thick beads of glue or anything and I'm really smashing the two layers together before putting them aside. This way we can get them as flush as possible. Really if you have the time, it is easier to get that flush look if you're using PVA glue. But honestly, I don't like waiting for that to dry between two layers of foam. Now I take out the hot wire table again and cut all the edges of each wall flush except the edges that will be facing the outside of the tile. Rather, I just cut the outside edge flush so it will be easier to get a straight edge later. After that, I draw out the brickwork on all the inner wall sections. I find it a lot easier to do this before gluing the walls to the floors. It just gives you a lot more space to work with. And we aren't doing anything fancy here, just your everyday staggered brickwork. This part of the build takes a while. Luckily, it was enough time to let my camera cool down a little bit because it was really starting to overheat. So while using the Proxon hot wire table, I messed up a little bit while cutting out the walls. I had hoped that the brickwork would cover up my bad cutting enough for me to be happy with it, but it didn't. So I decided to fix the problem brick by brick. I first chiseled out each brick section I wasn't happy with. This took more time than I would have liked and I think I could have gotten a lot faster results using a heat tool. Regardless, cutting out the bricks with a hobby knife was effective enough. I then cut out pieces of foam that resemble bricks. I did no specific measurements here, I just eyeballed things and compared the pieces to the missing bricks of the wall. Then I used a little hot glue to affix them in place. And as you can see, this method really blends in with the wall. I then run my breakaway utility knife across the surface of those bricks just to make sure that they sit flush with the wall. I also run my 1.4 millimeter ballpoint pen along all the crevices that separate the bricks. This makes them blend in even more. 
Now that my little reparation is finished, I start making a stony impression on the walls with my piece of asphalt. I have to be a little bit more careful when doing the walls than when I was adding texture to the floors, just because I don't want them to break or anything. And after texturing the walls, I add more detail by adding some cracks with my ultra fine point sharpie, just like I did with the floors. And now I can glue the walls to the floors. I just do this using hot glue. When I glue each section into place, I make sure to line the inner walls up with the one inch grid that I used in these rooms. I also make sure to press and hold each section while the glue cools and dries enough in order to keep the springy foam in place. And then I pull out the hot wire table once again and cut the outer edge flush. You may notice while I'm doing this that I wasted my time carving bricks into the outer walls of a few of the sections. I don't know what I was thinking, but I decided to save the cuts and the brick patterns for later. That leaves us with our three rooms unpainted. With my sanding sponge, I do a quick sanding along the outside of my rooms. If you do this, make sure you're wearing a respirator so you don't get little particles inside your lungs. And as stated earlier, I will have Amazon links in the description you can purchase from if you are interested in some of the same supplies I'm using. I decided to line the rooms up to a few of the previous rooms in the dungeon to see how they fit together. And well, it's a good thing I did that because as you can see, there's an entrance that doesn't line up. I don't know how I managed this, but I did and it must be fixed. So I do this by cutting out a part of the wall and moving it over. I blend things in by adding more brickwork with my pen and using the same process I did to fix my hot wire cutting mistake from earlier. And I unfortunately don't have the footage for this because when I loaded it onto my computer, the footage was corrupt. And because of that corrupted footage, you don't get to watch me paint everything black. No big loss there, it was a pretty straightforward step. I just used black paint and Mod Podge to coat everything and let it dry overnight. I then painted all the rooms with my gray paint from Hobby Lobby. I don't recommend this paint. I'm just using it because it matches the rest of the dungeon. I'm doing a thick overbrush with this gray, meaning I load the brush with paint, wipe a little off, and then apply it to the build. This makes the majority of the paint come off mainly on the raised surfaces of the brickwork and not so much in the cracks and crevices. I then do a light dry brush of Apple Barrel's Antique White all over the brickwork and the floors. This acts both to highlight and to bring out our detail in our rooms. And if you're getting some value out of this video, don't forget to give me a like or even a dislike. I would be happy with that. Now I take out my Tombow brush pen and pull out some more details by drawing directly onto the cracks and even touching up some of the gridded areas. I like using a brush pen for this step because I don't waste a bunch of ink or paint. It's pretty much no cleanup and it can leave a line with a varied width. And again, I had some corrupted footage. You basically missed me painting this checkerboard pattern on this room. This is something I was planning on doing for a while, as this room will be the kitchen area. And well, for me, a checkered floor just like screams kitchen. All I did was paint every other grid section black, so not too much was missed there. And then I went in and dry brushed a light gray highlight on all the black tiles. In order to dull things down just a little bit and bring out some more details, I covered everything at this point in a black wash. This is a very thin down black wash consisting of black ink, water, and flow improver. The flow improver really helps pull everything into the creases and cracks. This step also makes the dry brushing look less chalky. Then, after the black wash mostly dries, I added some mildewy dankness with the olive green glaze that we mixed up in previous videos. If you missed that, feel free to watch the whole Building a Dungeon series when you finish this video, and you'll see that we used it in a good deal of our previous rooms. It's basically black and yellow paint mixed with glazing medium and water. Black and yellow make green, right? I then use a small paint roller to touch up the black paint on the outside of the rooms. This gives the black a nice brush free even look and is a really nice touch to add to many of your builds. I've been used this on the bottom of the majority of my wargaming terrain and dungeon tiles. Now stay tuned until the end of the video to see glamour shots of this build and the dungeon so far. If you happen to be getting some value out of my channel, consider joining me on Patreon for as little as $1 a month and you will gain access to extra footage of videos like this one and videos that I've done in the past. 
And now for some quick comment shoutouts from my video on making quick and easy pillars. The first is from Maricela Atempa, who said, You make it look really easy to do. I love your work. Thanks Maricela for your support. I appreciate you so much. Frankie D. Crafter said, This is one of my favorite methods I've seen so far. I truly appreciate that Frankie. It means a lot coming from you. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that, but Jerezab said, great method, although it does require a hot wire table. Thanks, very true on the hot wire table. Maybe next time I should include ways to make it without one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss building things like wall paintings, a stove, and various other features that we'll be adding to these rooms. Continue the journey by clicking one of the two videos I've handpicked for you on the screen right now.